Bitcoin has been in a downtrend since rejecting at 31k to potentially local top here in candle 3, but does that mean that this four year cycle is broken in comparison to previous four year cycles that we've seen in the past? In today's episode, we're going to be looking at that question specifically. So let's dive right into the video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Like the video for more content like this going forward and let's dive right into it. So candle three is typically your candle where we see a bottoming out in the cycle as Bitcoin tends to prepare for the last part of the four year cycle, which is candle four. Candle four being the trend reversal candle that takes us to at least these highs. So essentially the four year cycle resistance, if you look back on previous four year cycles, we've seen candle four always either eclipse this resistance, this four year cycle resistance, which we've seen in candle one, two, and even three right over here with this upside wick. Also right over here, we either break this four year cycle resistance or we rally to new all time highs. In this four year cycle, you can see that we broke this resistance. And in this cycle, we've also broke that resistance. So it's very likely that in candle four, we're going to rally beyond 45K and even overextend beyond it. Because if we've seen price rally to new all time highs in candle four right over here, and over here, we didn't rally to new all time highs, but overextended beyond this four year cycle resistance quite con considerably, not quite touching old all time highs, but still getting very close to them, then really, 45k, 50, 55k in candle four. So 2024, that's something we could see next year. However, for candle four, we have to really bear in mind that we tend to see a few unique qualities in candle three. Candle three tends to perform an upside wick and a downside wick. And of course, in this candle three, we haven't seen that downside wick, but we have seen the upside wick. In this candle three, we've seen both. We've seen a long upside wick and a very short downside wick. And over here, a short upside wick, but long downside wick. And the thing about this candle three is that one could very easily argue that we'll see a downside wick in, in this year. So with September, we're, we're already mid-September. So we could only see a handful of months going into the end of the year. So a downside wick at this point in the candle three of the four year cycle is quite unlikely. And I'm going to tell you why, because in previous candle threes, we've seen these downside wicks occur early on in the year. So 2015, we saw a long downside wick occur earlier on in the year. And the upside wick occurred later on in the year. And very similarly to candle three in 2019, for instance, we didn't really see much of a downside wick in candle three of 2019. But this was still early on in the year, some downside volatility early on in the year. And of course, mid year is where we saw the local top. So if we just think about that in terms of this candle, then August is where we roughly topped out or July that region and that area, that time. So we've seen that local top already occur late in the year, mid in the year, middle of the year. But in terms of the downside wick, if it didn't happen, it will probably not happen because downside wicks tend to occur early on in the year of candle three. And of course you could argue that, well, what about 2015 when we topped out in late Q2, early Q3 and we have to bear in mind that this was a sideways accumulation range here at the bear market lows. So they're a very different market cycle to market cycle positioning before we saw a breakout from that accumulation range. And this was still a higher low. This was still a higher low. And the thing about the higher low is that that's still something we could see relative to 15,500. So this is essentially your 15,500 analogously. And then maybe 17, 18K is the higher low that occurs later this year, for instance. But still, that wouldn't be a downside wick in candle three. And in fact, this sort of 17K, 18K, that could actually happen later on 
in the future, in fact, in early 2024, which would still form a downside wick in the candle four, but not in your candle three, and still that would be a higher low. And the reason I mentioned this candle four downside wick is because we tend to see candle fours in, or at least downside wicks in the candle fours, but they always form that higher low relative to the bottom of candle three and the bottom of candle hit three as well here. Downside wick in candle four once again, but at a higher low. And you can see that this is a higher low relative to the bottom of the candle body and not actually the downside wick. The downside wick of candle three is always gonna be much lower in the same way here. This downside wick of candle three is gonna be lower than this one. And this one, this candle three won't have a downside wick most likely. And so candle four could open or at least candle four could open somewhere around here, but downside wick into close to 15,500, but never actually really getting there and forming a higher low in that process before we reverse beyond 45K, 50, 55K to potentially new all time highs even. If we get new all time highs in candle four, like we got in 2020, that would be fantastic, but that hasn't always happened in a candle four, as we've seen in this four year cycle. So is this current four year cycle broken? And the answer is probably not. It probably isn't broken just by looking at how things are similar to previous four year cycles. And of course, we haven't really spoken about the candle one or candle two at all. And candle one is your bull market peaking year. And you can see that we're seeing diminishing returns in each market cycle, considerable diminishing returns. And this is potentially part of, of course, diminishing returns is a major point here, but we also have to talk about how maybe more upside is transferring into the candle four. So we've spoken about how this candle four rallied to new all time highs and this candle four didn't rally to new all time highs, but we had a major acceleration in candle one. So here, perhaps some of the upside that was supposed to be in candle one transferred into candle three and was split across two candles in general. So that's perhaps an idea suggesting that maybe we're seeing the market cycle take place a little bit sooner or the more exponential parts of the cycle are occurring a little bit sooner than we saw in the past maybe it would take a little bit longer time to see pa truly parabolic results in the previous four year cycles. Whereas now maybe we're seeing those parabolic results a little bit earlier on in the bull market, the really confirmed bull market. So later on in candle four, that's one theory, but diminishing returns in candle one, that's something to really truly bear in mind. And of course, upside wicks always form in your candle one upside wicks, and upside wicks. And talking about those upside wicks, those upside wicks are always forming lower highs in the new bear market. So like this, in the new bear market. And over here, new bear market, small upside wick, a very slanting lower high right over here. So this slant is much sharper than in these previous cycles, but we're still seeing the same sort of recurring tendencies nonetheless. Another thing to bear in mind is that this bear market was around 77% deep in terms of retracement, whereas here we saw 84.5%, here we saw around 90% or 85%, something to that effect. So though there are diminishing returns over time, as we can see in the candle ones, we're also seeing diminishing retracement in the candle twos, the bear markets which is quite interesting as well. So if the, so if the four year cycle isn't really broken and it probably isn't, then maybe we should focus on what to expect in terms of potential bargain buying opportunities in candle four. So in 2024, because this is what's going to be most interesting to us going forward, where essentially candle three closes, and where candle four opens and the downside volatility 
below there. So the way this would translate into candle three and candle four going into 2024, let's say we get candle three close right over here at 26K. And candle four as a result is going to also open at 26K. But then that means that any sort of downside wicking would form a higher low relative to 15,500. But this would be your bargain buying opportunity in the same way that this was the bargain buying opportunity in candle four of 2020 and candle four of essentially 2016. And this goes by the same sort of principle that I mentioned in a thread earlier this year on Twitter that wherever candle two bottoms and then candle three begins, that's very close to your bear market bottom. And it just so happened that where the candle three occurred was very, very, very close to your bear market bottom and we didn't actually see any downside wicking in candle three. But generally this tends to be the case because candle two shows a bit of a downside wick and candle three sometimes also shows a bit of a downside wick. And also here as well, you see that. But generally speaking, wherever candle two ends and candle three begins, that's your general bear market bottom. So wherever candle three then on the flip side of that ends and candle four begins, we're very close to that bargain buying region and we just have to wait for that downside. Once again here, wherever candle three ends and candle four begins here, we still see some downside working and that's the bargain buying opportunity. So early 2024 would probably present us with a fantastic bargain buying opportunity that won't get us to 15,500. So it's quite likely that we're not gonna maybe see too much downside going into the end of the year. We might be just seeing a slow bleed going into the end of 2023, maybe some relief rallying, some downside relief rallying, but many people are expecting a crash going into the end of the year. And this crash is probably going to take place over a longer period of time. So probably going into the end of the year, we might close out somewhere around 23, 22K for instance, or maybe even close out at around the 26K region. Because if we look at previous candle threes, the candle body, as it is right now, it looks pretty similar to previous candle bodies. Because this candle body right over here was quite distorted by a downside wick turning into a hammer. And right over here, we're seeing that we're not really going to get a hammer. We're not really going to get a downside wick as a matter of fact. So we're not going to have a thin candle three right over here. What's more likely is this candle three is going to probably resemble something more like this. And it's already resembling that because we got a upside wick. So an inverted hammer of some sort. So that's really where the similarity is. And even this candle three, generally speaking, is quite similar to 2019. And the fact that we've probably local topped for the year, very similar to what we saw in mid June of 2019, where we local topped and just saw a slow bleed retrace this current candle three local top in, in July at 31 K that's how we've seen a slow bleed since then an even slower bleed than the one we saw right over here. So it'll probably continue like that going into the end of the year, but really important to just keep in mind that this candle three is still very similar to all the previous candle threes with the only exception that we're not going to see a downside wick probably this year, but we'll see one in early 2024 because we've seen some in the past. And in saying that this candle three and this general four year cycle, it's still very similar to previous four year cycles. The main structure is still very much intact. Of course, this is a bearish engulfing that many people are, are talking about a bearish engulfing candle right over here that the bear market pretty much engulfs the entire preceding candle one. And we've never really seen that actually, because we've always seen candle one engulf candle two, just like this in the past. Now we're seeing a bit of the reverse. And what this adds is a bit of complexity in the sense that candle four resistance becomes a candle one support, which becomes a candle three resistance here. And we've never really seen that in previous cycles because we've never really seen a bearish and girl from candle in the four year cycle. 
But at the same time, we've also seen in previous cycles a bullish Harami, which is essentially this candle being engulfed by the candle too. So bullish Harami right over here and bullish Harami. So this bearish engulfing candle has acted out already. It's already probably exacted all of its retracement capabilities and now transitioning into the early phase of the bull market, which is the bullish Harami, which will precede a candle for in 2024. So the bearish engulfing candle has probably already fully validated and activated. And now it's time for the next pattern in this four year cycle. And of course, breaking beyond this region isn't probably going to happen this year, as we've seen in this uh, upside wick, this rejection right over here. And the upside wick is where we've seen the four year cycle resistance act quite strongly as a point of rejection. And this four year cycle resistance should have been somewhere around here. And that's what many people were thinking about that we could rally to 45K this year. But that was the added complexity that we actually saw right over here, that maybe this, the underside of candle one and the overside of candle four are going to act as that resistance in candle three right over here. So in any case, this four year cycle still very much resembling a lot of the true recurring tendencies in previous four year cycles, of course, diminishing returns in candle ones and diminishing also bear market retracements, but also candle three being your bottoming out candle just like this. And it looks like this candle three has already taken the majority of its shape, whether it closes at 26, 25, 24, that's really not too important. But the most important thing is that there will probably be no downside wick in this candle three, the candle three upside wick has already probably taken place in this current candle three and four year cycle. So this is pretty much what we should expect going into the end of 2023, slow bleeding and time capitulation. Generally speaking, this candle three has already pretty much taken shape. And now all we can really do is try to position ourselves for this part of the cycle. So early 2024 and there's a high likelihood of a retracement coming in early 2024. So it's just something to really bear in mind and be prepared for. And that preparation should pretty much really start now if we get some sort of crash and retracement this year, which is probably more on the less likely side, but still something to be prepared for. It's something we're going to be preparing for anyway, but it's always better to be prepared beforehand by dollar cost averaging some sort of buy orders at lower prices, essentially accommodating for this sort of wick dollar cost averaging into a potential wick going into early 2024. That's how I'm going to be playing it in any case. So that's about it for today's deep dive in the four year cycle. Feel free to sign up for the deep dives in the link in the description down below. If you'd like to learn more about my personal strategies, I post these videos in the weekly deep dives every week, every Tuesday. So feel free to subscribe to those if you enjoyed this video. Once again, thank you so much for watching today. Subscribe to the channel for more YouTube videos like this going forward. Like the video for more content like this also in the future. I'm Rekt Capital and I'll speak to you in the next one. Speak to you soon.